Hi everyone, Niall here. Welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about how you can take a, let's say, a CSV formatted points file, some, something from like a, a LiDAR map or something like that, and generate a topo surface in Revit directly from that points file. Okay, so looking on screen here, you can see a Revit topo surface that was generated off of the back of a Excel points file such as this. Okay. And what we're going to do is I'm going to talk through the formatting of the Excel file. First of all, what you need to do to ensure your Excel data that you've received is in the correct format for Revit to read. Then I'm going to go through the process within Revit on how to create the topo surface from the points file. Then I'll show that it is a regular topo surface, much the same as any regular topo surface. So you can actually model on it freely the way you normally would. And then I'm going to talk about a few of the things that I don't like about this method and why I advise people to go through Civil 3D when they can. And um, this is actually the third part of a video series that I've undertaken that shows the process of taking the points data into Civil 3D and then from Civil 3D in through to Revit. OK, and in this video, we're kind of cutting out the middleman of Civil 3D. This might be good for early conceptual design or something like that. But I have qualms with the way that this is done and i'd prefer users to go through the other method so the links to the two previous previous videos are, are down below make sure to, to 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 have an oogle at them and make sure uh, that you you know you come to your own conclusion about which method is best for you okay so anyway as always i'm not to say 20 bim i hope you enjoyed this um all resources and stuff are available from the first link down below make sure to go and have them if you if you want to work along um we also have a 820 BIM Discord community channel that is full of very lovely and helpful people. If you have any questions about this, make sure to hit me up over there or in the comment section down below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll get out of your face and start showing you how this is done now. Okay. So step one is how to format the Excel file that you've received to ensure that the data is in the correct sequencing, let's say, for Revit to read. Okay. So looking at the Excel file we have on screen here, um, it's 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 nearly there anyway. Okay, so what we have in the top is we have an X, Y, Z, and an accuracy level. Okay, and if you watch the first video of the three part series, I've already went through this. Feel free to skip to the next step. But if you haven't, what we need to do is ensure that we have an Eastings, a Nordings, and an elevation being the Z axis. Okay, um, and only those values in the Excel. We don't need anything else. We don't even need the headers for X, Y, and Z. We just need to understand that they're in the correct let's say, column for the Eastings, Nordings, and elevations, respectively. We also don't need an accuracy level. That's just a figure that's going to confu confuse, you know, Revit or Civil 3D or CAD or any program you were doing this kind of process with, okay? So in order to format this file in particular, your format is likely to vary. So just know you want Eastings, Nordings, and your elevation, your X, Y, and Z, in that sequence in the first three columns, okay? So selecting our uh, D column, I'm just going to delete the D column there. And then I'm also going to delete row one, which has the headers. Okay. And that is our formatting resolved here because we already had it in our Eastings, Nordings and our elevation respectively. Okay. So that's how to format your Excel document. The most important thing to understand as well, when you're looking at the formats for the Excel file is that it needs to be exported or saved as a CSV format. So that's a comma separate value. And this tells the software such as Revit or CAD or whatever software you're using that commas are the delimiting factor between the values. That means that it recognizes that one value is closed by the comma that precedes it. OK, so your X comma Y comma Z will tell the program that this is the position of this point in your your Eastings, your Northings and your your Z axis respectively. Okay. So just understand you need to export it as a CSV for Revit to be able to read it. Okay. So now that's done, we're going to go into the next part and show you how to bring it into Revit. So step two is how to bring the points file directly into Revit to create your topo surface. Okay. So looking at the, fi uh, the file here, this is just a blank standard architectural template that's metric. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to take in, obviously, our surface to create a topography. So the first thing we want to do is activate the topography view. So we're going to go to our site plan to begin. OK, and then we're going to go to top of surface under massing and site. So we go to the massing and site tab, top of surface. OK, and top of surface is the usual way you can place them. You can place the points independently. You can create them from a CAD import, which is actually something I did in the previous video, the second video of the series. I check out that link down below if you need to see how to take 
Civil Tree D or CAD data into Revit for the top of surface. But in this instance, on the drop down from create from import, we're going to select specify a points file. Okay. And this is going to open the directory that I wanted to open it. And you can see that we have the 8020 BIM conversion CSV. And this is the file that I just changed the formatting of and saved so that it would be in the correct X, Y, and Z um, columns, respectively. Okay. And the only thing that's populating that file are the values for each point. There's about 10,000 plus points in that. So it's quite detailed. Um, and that's all you need. And you're going to see exactly why that's all you need. Okay. And you can see that the, the, the type of files it uses comma delimited text or CSV. So what I, this is telling you is that Revit recognizes the commas as the separators between the values. So you always have to save out as a CSV if you're in Excel or as comma delimited text if you're in a, um, in a, in a text-based document instead, because you're not always going to get your information in from the surveyor or, you know, your, your mapping surface or whatever in excel you might actually get it in something like notepad or something like that so you still have that capacity in the uh, text files okay so i'm going to press csv i'm going to select my comma um, comma separated values um and i'm going to press open okay and one unit in the file equals one blank okay so one unit in the file is what dictates the the the, the relationship between the units that you have in your Revit environment and the units that are coming in. Okay. So what we want to say is one unit in the file coming in is one meter. Okay. Because it is a survey. It's a site survey. We work in meters. Okay. And I'm going to press. Okay. It's going to take a moment and you can see you'll get a warning down here. Imported top of surface based on located a large distance from the model and might not display property points will be centered in the model instead. Okay. That's fine. We don't have a problem with that because it's just a kind of a more of a generic warning than anything. Okay. And you can see that there's an absolute mass of points here now. Okay. And what I can do is I can finish that top of surface and it becomes a lot cleaner. All you see is the actual contouring of the top of the surface. We can then go ahead and make edits to this much the same way as we any would any top of surface. And I'll, I'll touch on that now in a moment. Okay. But going to the 3D view, first and foremost, you can see that you can actually see the contours, the profiles, and the respective elevation of the uh, the surface that's been generated just from the points file. So it's a very, very quick way of taking something like a LiDAR map, something like a, um, uh, an ordnance survey file into your, into your model environment very quickly so that you can kind of start using some sort of um, basis for conceptual design or, or let's say, um, blocking out your site plans for various utilities, services, buildings, what have you. Beyond that, though, um, we can kind of make edits to the the uh, materials of this, much the same way as we could any other top of surface that we generated directly in Revit, let's say if we were manually placing points. So in this instance, I can say, um, let's say Earth. You can press Earth, press OK. Uh, I can also create a subregion if I wish and go to the top down view. And let's say this area here lends itself to um, a, a building footprint so we can kind of say that this here looks like, you know, it might be suitable as block one for our building or what have you, um, if we're doing some sort of conceptual site scheme. And uh, I can finish that and I can change that, let's say to, I don't know, concrete. Um, and again, obviously we'd use something like a building pad instead of the, the, um, the subdivide surface, but you know, this could be the offset for the path around the building pad or something like that. So you can see that this works much the same way. We can also change the presentation of this in our uh, edit top of surface if we wish, okay? Um, but really, we, we don't need to go into too much detail. That's that's a separate video on how top of surfaces and stuff can be edited in Revit, okay? Um, but this shows that you can go directly from a points file into Revit. Um, and in a moment, I'm just going to talk through what the caveats of that are. So... Finally, I just want to very quickly talk about why this is not necessarily my recommended way of doing this. OK, so I'm going to make a couple of assumptions here um, and, you know, take what you will of the assumptions. But if you're using Revit and if you have access to CAD, um, you are probably using an AEC suite within the Autodesk infrastructure, right? If you're paying for Revit and CAD independently, you're, you're, you're a lunatic, basically. You should be using the AEC suite, okay? If you are on an AEC suite, you also have access to Civil 3D. 
Civil 3D will do this conversion as well. It will do it more accurately. You can stand over the data with a little bit more confidence. You can dictate a lot more of the presentation criteria and analyze a lot more of the information. You can also use it to take, you know, sectional views. You can do cut and fill exercises, all that kind of stuff in Civil 3D. So it's a better basis for doing the site development, generally speaking, than what Revit is. Okay. Taking it directly into Revit really is for kind of a schematic design um, just to kind of trash it out and figure out what you want to do on the site. Why I prefer to go through Civil 3D and then bring it into Revit from Civil 3D, there's a couple of reasons. So first of all, I'd advise you to watch the two previous videos if you're interested in, in learning the workflows, and they'll be linked down below. But I'm going to give you the reasons why I don't like taking the points file directly into Revit. So first of all, bringing the points file directly into Revit does not allow you to acquire the coordinate system from the points file. So what does that mean? Okay, so let's say I'm on site plan here, okay, and I press EL, okay, and I'll take a spot coordinate, and I'm just going to pick there, okay? We know that that spot coordinate is reporting incorrectly because we've seen from the document there in the Excel that nothing went above the 85,000 value on the XY. So this is 116,000. So what this means is that the relative position of this in space is incorrect, okay? And our model is not reading the position of the, the, the surface in geographical terms. It only has the surface placed within the model environment and there's no association between the model environment and where the surface actually is in the real world, okay? Um, so that's one caveat because if you go through Civil 3D and then you do a CAD export and then you take in the CAD data, from the linked CAD data, you can acquire the coordinates. And if you watch the second video in the, in the links below, you will see that I can actually tell Revit, this is the geolocation of this file and this is where it belongs on planet Earth, for want of a better phrase. And then you know you're actually working to an ordnance system that you can stand over. You can kind of say, okay, I can actually do a, relative, a decent amount of setting out from this. I could set out my my grid intersections and my, my, my pad foundations and my various utility runs and that kind of thing to the local coordinate system. It might be the Irish transverse marketer or it might be whatever the coordinate system is wherever you are in the world. Um, and you can stand over that information. Whereas in this instance, you've really just kind of plugged a topography map as a picture more so than anything else. And there's no association back to the geographical location. Okay. Um, Outside of that, it is known that the Revit point um, mapping is not as reliable. So you might get outliers whereby you'd have these spikes within the footprint of your, your topography. And that's basically Revit just misreading or misinterpreting the averages between the points, you know. So let's say on a LiDAR map, you might have a... Um, it might be doing a density reading to pick up the ground and let's say exclude buildings. So buildings would be relatively hollow to the ground. So it'll exclude the building and just get the ground profiles. But something like a bollard might show as a spike. Um, now, the LiDAR service should average that out for you. But if they haven't, you can actually use tools in Civil 3D to kind of average out the gradient to take out those spikes of density that would be called by a concrete caused by a concrete bollard whereas Revit would pick that up one as to one and while you might think that's beneficial it's actually not because it picks up the bollard not as a bollard but as part of the topography so what you actually need to do then is kind of cross-reference the information that you have on site to the, the the point data that you brought in recognize oh that's actually a bollard in this instance and then manually go and change all the points around that bollard to, to average out so it's actually less efficient a workflow to actually get your grading that you might need within Revit. Um, it's better just to know that there's a bollard there and place a bollard there in Revit in the aftermath than to actually have to change the, 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 the point information back to a norm, let's say, relative to the positions around it. And even then, you don't know what that norm is. You might be under overselling the, the average, let's say, by a couple of hundred mils just because you're kind of eyeballing it and you actually don't know what's going on in the ground. So there, 
the reasons why I have issues with this methodology, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have values. It's very good for early conceptual design. It's very good for just getting in and blocking out your sites and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's it. Ramble over. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it valuable. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. So, so YouTube knows that it is valuable for other people. And all resources again are available in the first link down below. Discord community server is on the second link if you want to ask any questions or you can hit the comment section below as well. And yeah, look forward to seeing you for the next one. Hope you found this useful and uh, mind yourselves out there. Take care. Bye-bye.